Are you listening to this episode on Himalaya? If you are, congratulations, because you're already using the best new podcast app out there. If you're not, well, you're a loser and missing out, so get it together. Uh, Whether you're a podcaster or a fan, Himalaya is designed with you in mind and has a ton of cool new features like curated shareable playlists and collections made just for you, along with personalized recommendations to help with content discovery. And the best part is, it's super easy to use. It's definitely my favorite listening app, and I'm sure it will be yours too. So do yourself a favor and download Himalaya today, and be sure to follow my show, Worst Firsts, once you're there. Bye. Guys, we are here today on Worst First with the one, the only, Heather McDonald. She has been on Chelsea lately. She's been all over the comedy scene for years. She's a great stand-up comedian, and she plays with Barbies on her Instagram, which I love. Thank you. I'm all for playing with Barbies for your whole life. Oh, well, you know, it's a it's a blessing and a curse. Why? Because now people expect me to do like every episode of The Real Housewives oh. and re- and I do in like those videos. You do so good though. I do these videos yeah. with Barbies yeah. um, as the characters and I do mm-hmm. all the voices and um, I have a juicy scooper in Kansas that's like really talented who thank God like sends me some of the outfits. <laughs> she does? Yes. She makes them. Oh, she, she you makes post them. them. Her name's Betsy. Oh, and I, Shout out to Betsy. Yeah. But and so now people are like, oh my God, I can't wait for the next, next season of this, the next season of this. And I'm like. You're like, listen, bitch, I don't have a production budget yeah. over here. Okay. Like <laughs> no. I'm fucking taking up a lot of my life. I got three kids, a husband. Like I'm trying to yes. live my life. I got to go you do know, stand so I'm, up. I'm like, oh God, you know. You're like, I don't have a showrunner. But I'm. <laughs> appreciative for it because it's it's definitely given a little burst of creativity for me yeah, so I, I enjoy it yeah. and you get a lot of views yes it's been really good well You're... I also threaten the people I'm like if I if this doesn't make this many views I'm not doing any more they just I'm start like, sending it to yeah, random people, people. <laughs> have to appreciate how hard it is it's a lot of work to make how, videos uh, yeah and then you're you know and then I'm uh, like editing it as you mm-hmm, know and yeah and you have to get down to a minute because you yep. want the whole minute to be on Instagram well, you can go further than a minute now, well, now if you make the, it to TV let me Instagram ask you TV. do you think that gets more views or less I think it gets it depends if the, if it's a good video it's it'll get more because people keep watching it you know oh, okay yeah, they will they it's the keep watching button that's what happens okay when you have, I'll show you how to do it if you don't no, know no, we, do it. Yeah, we've you know done I've done the IGTV we okay. just sort of sometimes it's hard to decide what is like the yeah. same thing not <laughs> this is all like Instagram talk but the same thing where it's like, oh, a two-part video where you swipe, yeah. I don't think it's good because no, then the views don't bad. count. No, that's bad. Don't do yeah. that. Yeah, don't do the swiping because people are just like, oh, I got to fucking, this that's is all weird. Up. It's all broken up. My arm. <laughs> it's like a broken home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I just want yeah. it all in one, in one place. Exactly. Um, so you have the Juicy Scoop podcast, which I did and I love. Yes. You've been ha- you've had that for a while. Yes, it was, um, I just, be- we just we like it's a big company no i just celebrated um three years it's been three years so i started in july of, of this uh, uh 2016 and you have a big following on there i mean thank god i you do because really it's like do. you know it's you know and it, it, it's like look there's 2,000 million podcasts every so day. Nina has a podcast. Yes. Everybody has a podcast. I mean, seriously. Yeah. And so I just really appreciate the people that, ha- you know, choose to listen to me and, and stick with it. And I'm glad to have a lot of other people on and introduce them to other podcasts, yep. as I'm sure you are, too. Yep. So it's good. But it's a freaking, it's a hustle. It's a lot of work. It's a hustle. People don't realize it. Yes. It's a lot of work and, uh, you know, booking guests and being on top of shit yes. and all that stuff. It's a lot but of work. But appreciate, it's fun. Appreciate it more than anything because that, like, the not until I had the podcast did I just realize, like, you know, how you can really touch people and yeah. be part of their life. Like, more than the books, because mm-hmm. I wrote books, more than stand-up, more than being on Chelsea for seven years. Like, this was the thing that people, that you can really connect with your audience, and they are a very loyal audience, hopefully. Yes, yes. And um, have been for me. And so that part of it has been really, like, a unique experience. You being that you've made it so big in the social media world, have mm-hmm. you found something special about this versus all the other work you've done in the past that you've basically done yourself? I think I just felt so idle for a minute because I was just sitting at home in Calabasas doing nothing. I was like, <laughs> I have, how many green juices can I get a day? Like, how many times can well, I shop I think I saw at you at Lululemon, right? We, we, we I went saw to, you uh, at the Sun, what's it sun called? Sun Cafe, Sun Life. Sun Life, sun yes. Life. I saw you there. And we were there. talking there, 
And it was hilarious. We were both getting our juice, and we were living our best Calabasas lives, um, shopping and doing our thing. Well, you I know? was doing one of those things where you think you're getting sick, so you go there. Yeah, and you, you spend start, like twenty eight dollars on like, and they give you orange juice, echinacea, or whatever. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't work. I'm sorry. Right, it doesn't. It doesn't. No. It's like just double down. If you don't have insurance, just go to an urgent care and just yeah. go look. I, ha- I know I have a sinus infection. Yeah. Just give me the goods. Or have you ever had the wellness formula from Whole Foods? That thing really works. I don't know what's in it. Probably like fucking Hindu. So you think whatever. that works? Cause that th- works. Because those other shots that I got with you did not. No, they don't work. This is a pill. It's called the wellness formula. It's at, uh, at a Whole Foods and it's their horse pills. They're like this big. And they if you take them a couple times a day, you'll never get sick again. Like I I love them. So you take them every day? You know, if you can't, if you feel like you're getting sick, you start oh. taking them. And even if you feel like a slight cold coming on, you start taking. I swear by these pills. I'm not getting paid for this. They are amazing. And they're called the the wellness formula. You can at, order it off Amazon. Whole, oh. They have it on Whole Foods, but you can order it off Amazon. Lifesaver. Do you ever feel that you're not doing that great when your dog is clearly sleeping? She's during so the- <laughs> bored of my whole life. She's like, this bitch brings me everywhere. I don't even want to go. I'd rather be at home playing with my bones. Like. I have anxiety, so I just bring her everywhere. I'm like, it makes me feel better. I pet her. She's so nice. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I actually was uh, sharing this on my podcast. I don't know when this is going to come out, but I had her with me at the post office yesterday. And I walk into the post office, and she's on a leash, and this lady behind the counter screams from behind the counter. She goes, excuse me, is that a service animal? And I'm all, whoa, dude, so loud. Everyone turns around looks at me. I'm like, yes, she's a service animal because I do have her registered and everything. And she goes, what's the service? And I was like, she's this is a, the person who works at the post at office? the post uh. office, screaming at me across the counter. I go, she's a therapy dog. She's like, okay, I'm coming around. I need to see her paperwork. I so was do you have like, the paperwork? this bitch. I actually do have tags for her in my purse. I have or you should here. screen ta- screen um, grab the okay. so I have the to, work. So I have her tags. That I had to like fucking oh go my God. get for her when we like submit your documents and fucking go make her get trained. Have wheelchairs pushed past her and everything so she doesn't bark. And right, even though she just barked at you. Do you, you really came have in. to do that all? Because I really well, kind of think the myth is that it's very easy to get. It is, but here's the thing: like I like to be legit, so just in case it ever becomes a problem. So yes. I did it. So here's what happened. So I literally had I didn't have that with me because I just switched purses. And I was like, fuck, I don't have them with me. I went scouring through my personal yeah. under. I'm sweating. I'm getting uh, anxiety. And uh, and uh, I text my husband. I said, can you send me a picture of this? And she's standing there next to me just waiting. And she's like, if it doesn't, if you don't get it, you're going to have to leave. And just making me so embarrassed. And then I show it. I finally get it and show it. She doesn't even apologize. Nothing. Just walks away. Do you know what we found out about that story? What? She is the one that got the dog from Dorit. And I'm <laughs> just kidding. What's that? Dorit, is that the Real Housewives thing? That's the Real Housewives. I'm so in another world. I don't watch that show. It doesn't matter, but all I can think about is because there's this whole thing. The entire season was called Puppy Gate because uh, this dog apparently like ended up in a kill shelter instead of back at Vanderpump Dogs. Stop. And I don't know if your listeners know what I'm talking about or not, but I was trying to make a dumb. No, they didn't. They 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 were realized before. But I was always. But the question is, who is that woman? A fucking bitch is who she is. Fuck bitch. She might be the same woman that worked at that post office. That's all I'm saying. We're trying to find out. Just evil. Like, what do you get out of that? Like, I get I don't look like someone who has a disability, but I'm fucking crazy, lady. Okay, like (laughs) I am out to breakfast, lunch, and dinner, guys. Like I am woo out there. You know what I mean? Yes. And she doesn't know that. Like I could have gone fucking crazy crazy on her ass and I didn't you know she's yes. like oh she's cute with her little forever 21 clothes no bitch I'm <laughs> fucking crazy don't be fooled by the crop top you know what I'm saying right Heather you get it I get it I you're get like it. so beautiful and like it. just I with get it. it you're great no so, but most people I mean I, I I've never seen someone challenge it like oh, I mean it, yeah. a lot of comedians joke about the amount of service animals There's too many yeah they're on fake, planes yeah. and stuff and so it's kind of like but I'm like, hey, okay, with a small dog. No one cares. Actually, and look how quiet and sleeps. And I was bark. seated next to a service monkey. Yes, from Burbank to Phoenix. What and I kind talk of about mon- it, my monkey? Like one that, like, like one that you saw in Friends. Like a like little a monkey, yeah, like a, yeah, like a mo- yeah. like a hangout monkey. Yeah. And um, you were next had a little to a vest. Like I have a job, you know. And um, he all hands out peanuts. Yeah. 
He's got a little hat on. And I was like thinking, I'm like, well, isn't like I get why someone would need their dog, and dogs, you know, a lot of dogs have jobs. Okay? Yeah. So I Careers. get a service she animal has a full dog. career right here. Yeah. I mean, you know, with the police force, yeah. everything. They shoot guns. Yeah. But I'm like, can you think of a less calming animal than a fucking monkey? That's if some shit goes down on the plane and turbulence starts to happen, that thing is going to be like, Rah! yeah, it's gonna jumping on everybody's heads. Yeah. Yeah. Like it just doesn't seem like a calming <laughs> animal. Like I, it's not chill. Yeah, it's yeah. totally not. Like, what did I, it do while I was sitting next to you? Just looked very like just it looked at me. It was just like you know like its <laughs> face. It had a diaper, and then she said, "Don't worry, she's very mature." And I'm like, "Well, you you already just told me your dog your cat well, dog cat your monkey is seven, and you know it's not potty trained did yet. So I'm not all? that I'm not that impressed. Right, right. They don't really get potty trained. I guess not. I mean, I guess it was nice that she put the diaper on Oh, yeah, because it'd be flinging shit everywhere. Those things shit I was just at my friend's house, and she has a really cute little dog, and um, it's like five, and it still wears a diaper. And she's like, don't don't shame him. And um, she couldn't house train it because she's a little lazy? She said they, no, they they tried, and I guess it's like a kid that still wets its bed, and like, what are you going to do? What kind of dog is this? It's one of those really cute... um, like Boo, like the dog Pomeranian. Boo. Yes. Okay, but they can be house trained. You just have to be really these kind of dogs. Dachshunds are normally like that. They won't house train, but she she house trained. Like you have to be so vigilant. You yes. have to literally devote it. Like I'm gonna take this dog out every you know hour or so. Make it go to the bathroom. If it doesn't go to the bathroom, it goes back to doggy jail. Right. You know? And then once it gets used to that, oh, give it a treat every time it goes to the bathroom. Now she like is totally. But you have to be really vigilant, you know? Yeah, I think of course. Any dog can be trained. Your friend's just like, I like shopping more than I like training my dog. <laughs> I'm dead. Okay, so this whole yes. podcast, I love it. I just totally got off topic. The whole podcast is about worst first, about okay. some of the worst shit that's happened to you. Okay. So you've had some stories, I'm sure. Yes. I You're mean, like, I've had I'm a human. Some, I've had some, you know, cra- yeah, some good stories. So, okay, like, so tell me one of the worst shit that's happened to you. The worst first. It doesn't even have to be the first one. It can just be anything bad. A bad date, a bad drug trip. A well, bad... I just thought of this story recently okay. with my assistant because she she was saying, like, has anyone ever gotten mad that you've talked about them or, or written? And I said, yeah. well, when I wrote my second book, yeah, yes. Really? And I've since told people, if you're writing a memoir, yeah. like, I changed some of the people's names in it, yeah. but not everybody. Because uh-huh. if I had two friends that I spoke Funny, truthfully, they got to read the book before me, yeah. before I sent it out. I felt like, oh, that'll be kind of fun for them. Yeah, yeah. That I'm using their real name. Right, right. And most of them didn't mind. Thought it was but great. my advice is just change everyone's name. So you don't get sued. That, and then also, it'll be harder to put the pieces together of those that you didn't speak well right, of. Right, 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 right. You know? Mm-hmm. So I, in my second book, I had the first chapter called The Real Housewives of Woodland Hills. And I told the story of how I had these groups of mothers over. Because at the time, I felt there I was really trying to be that mom. And mm-hmm. like I just couldn't be, which mm-hmm. is why I called it my inappropriate life. Like mm-hmm. I was at the Catholic school, and I wanted to be friends with these people. And I kept trying. Eventually, I stopped caring. Like, you know, and you now fucking I'm bitches are annoying. Not yeah, friends yeah. with anyone. Yeah. And I'm just like, who cares? The kids are old. Like, whatever. Fuck right. it. But um, at the time, I was like, why did I get invited to the third grade pool party? You know, like, I was, like, very much. <gasps> I want some w- of the Kool-Aid for a day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. how are they yeah. not inviting me? Like, I'm uh, I'm on Chelsea lately. Yeah, I'm a stand-up yeah. comic. I'm popular. I'm, I'm cute. I'm funny. Yeah, yeah, I like to drink. Right. So I was friends with some of these people. But this one woman was just very judgy and pretty annoying from the moment I met her. But she kept getting invited in the group. So mm-hmm. we had all the kids come over. And we were watching an episode of, of After Lately, which was like a spinoff of Chelsea Lately. It was kind of like a Curb Your Enthusiasm type of show about us mm-hmm. working there. And, you know, we're sitting around. It's for the adults. The kids mm-hmm. are in another room. But mm-hmm. this one woman's kid, you know, because she's so bright, it's scary. You know, she's, she's one of the... I can watch it. Yeah. Like Christine can watch it. The way the parent, like when yeah. parents have one kid she's and they just sure. are like... It's scary. Oh, she God. scares me. She's so bright, oh, you know. God. And so, meanwhile, she's not to work the fucking toaster. Mom, <laughs> I can't figure out how to work the toaster. I'm just kidding. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Is it down? Is it up? Like so. Anyway, yeah. she um. So she just kept saying, and I just come back from like working like five shows in Denver. Jesus. Came right home to go do this little party. Mm. 
Now I've had a couple drinks. I'm probably PMSing. Mm -hmm. And it just starts where she's like, oh, my God, this is so inappropriate. This is so inappropriate. Hannah just came up to me and just, you know, was like, Ma, this is so inappropriate. And I finally was like, well, it wasn't meant for the kids. Like, I get it. Like, I'm so sorry that I've ruined your kid's life. Like, you know, and I kind of have a freak out. And it became like a little bit like a fight on like a real housewives oh where like God. then my friend is like whoa ladies what's happening here like and we start wow. like t- and i was like oh my god this is amazing story. you're like can someone quick go get my f- camera yeah, yeah, start yeah filming amazing us. Yeah, story for me to tell later so right. i tell the story later and after that night because i'm not getting paid by bravo or anybody yeah. else we never hooked up again i never yeah. invited her to my house again yeah, i was yeah. just like you know what like you're too We're judgy yeah. and i'm just like not into your shit anymore yeah so when i wrote the book I changed her and her, you know, her name and her kid's name, um, but I made my other friend's name stay the same, right. who was really kind of the connecting factor between us. Right. And I, you know, I never thought much. I was not really, I didn't care because we weren't like friends anymore. Right. Well, anyway, I go and I have like a, that for the second book, I had like a real book party. Yeah. So I'm like on this high, come yeah. home from my book party yeah. and I'm feeling myself. Yeah. And the next day, my husband and I were going to Chicago to like, you know, do stand up and sell the books and do yeah. press. And um, he's asleep. And for some reason, I go to my emails and I get like the most scathing email from the husband. And he's she like, had the husband send the email. Well, he was pissed the way I wrote about his wife. Oh, God. And he's like, you know, um, he called me a pig. And it was just you're like a hundred pounds. <laughs> Wrong choice. He could have called you like a weird ostrich or something. It's not like a great choice. Like if you were fat, okay, but like really a pig. Yeah, really anyway, like okay, a giraffe. Yeah, maybe. yeah, yeah. You're like okay. I, mean, I like truffles, but like chill. Yeah, yeah. So. Giselle, <laughs> yeah. possibly. Right, right. Um, <laughs> but I and I was like, oh my god, you know. And but my what did initial, you even say about my it? initial that, yeah, thought yeah. in my heart was, fuck, I hurt this woman's feelings. Yeah. I mean, I really did. I felt yeah. like. God, well, really, I, how obsessed with you is that she's reading your book, though? Like, well, to I mean, read your I book? think she, even though we hadn't really talked, I still think she thought things were fine. Right, I just right. like, well, you know, I don't get together with people all the time. Like, so that aspect of it, I just, it's again, when people do apologize, I believe when they say, like, I really didn't mean to hurt anyone. I said that joke. Or yeah. to that. I mean, it was, I never thought I was, I was writing it. Oh, I hope she reads this and feels shitty. Like, right. I, I just was like, this is a good story to yeah, tell, like, and this is the way I told it, you know. Mm-hmm. And I changed her name, so I was like, and um, and then he's like, you know, you're the horrible mother. You're the you lost your child at a Halloween carnival, and my wife helped find him. And I'm like, well, he gets lost all the time, so like, she's not the only <laughs> you're woman. Like, We're all a little lost, aren't we, Paul? Hmm? <laughs> she's not the only one that's had right. to save my child. Okay. Like, get okay, in first line. of all, I've lost him way more times than the <laughs> yeah. time you helped me find And I had people better than your wife help me find him before. So, whatever. Anyway. So then so she's, I, so that, so what I wrote said, yeah. back to yeah. him, which then after that, that was also a worse first because that started the first of my husband being like, why do you answer people right away? Oh, my husband says that too. So Give it time. I've gotten better mm, thinking about it because it's it. been like, you know, five years or so since then. But, yeah, you know, like just give it a minute and decompress. But I did, I just wrote like, you know, oh, he also was under the impression because he read an excerpt of it. He didn't even buy the book. Oh, boy. Like on Amazon. Yeah. And it was like something where he, he really thought like I had cameras hidden and I had captured the day, not that I just remembered it and rewrote it in my head. So then I was like, okay, first of all, it's not for a reality show. No one's seeing it. Yeah. It's my memory. I yeah. have Simon & Schuster's attorneys check over everything. So don't yeah. try to like wave the lawsuit flag Did at me. Did he try to say he was going to It was sue? just a little, it was just one of those type of yeah. things. So I'm like, slow your roll, yeah. okay? Yeah. But I, I also put, yeah, your wife is the superior mother. She made yeah. that very clear that night. And that's what I wrote about. And freedom of speech, bitch. Yeah, so yeah. be grateful for, that you're married to her and yeah. don't ever contact me again. Good. And but, they never did. Yes, he did on LinkedIn. He wanted to be my friend about two years later. But I don't know what my code is or whatever my password. Yeah. So there's about a thousand people that think I've blown them off on LinkedIn because I signed up like Okay, first of all, you don't need those friends in your life that are still <laughs> using LinkedIn. Like that's a good way to do the cut the cut the line. Yeah. Like if you guys are still on there, like that's not what we want. 
when we're, you know what I'm saying? Right, like that's exactly. not fun. Nobody wants that. Like <laughs> those are a good way to, you know, decide who you want and who you don't want in your life. Sending you LinkedIn requests, hmm, probably probably keep them out. You know, it's like a good way to. Well, that's kind of fucked up. So that was the thing, and then it really. So you know, and what also sucked is that, um, you know, that it was a first time that, like, you know, that that. It was my book party. Like, yeah, but, you were like trying to celebrate and ignore that. I mean, we're trying to celebrate like a good part in your life, right? And, and then all of a sudden, they have to try the, to put the but kibosh. But that on. has been a pattern in my life. Really? Like, uh, highlights of my career have been overshadowed by like really shitty stuff over and over and over again. So I'm like, don't you feel like it's more? And I, not to say this, but don't you feel like it's more because you're a female comedian? People try to keep you down. I mean, I don't know that that guy would have written that to a man or not, but I mean, I felt shitty about it. And what I took from that was for people that are writing books or or blogs or whatever, it's just change the names of everybody. Yeah, keep it all. Change aliases, the names of it. They probably yeah. would have still figured it out because I did say, I go, look, I changed your name. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. but whatever. Yeah. You know, it happened to me and you can write about people, you can write about your life. Like, I know, I do. That but too. it just, just, when someone like criticizes you like that, you're like, oh, I do feel kind of shitty. But yes, I saw them a couple times after, after that. that. Was it so awkward? I just avoided them with by the with like, like the plague. Yes, like I've wow. never been at a party. It was easy enough to be like they're over there, and I like went this way. Yeah, all your friends live in like ten thousand square foot houses. You're like, I can hang out at the, this end of the party. <laughs> they can hang out at the other end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One time it was church. You can get a hell of a deal uh, in Calabasas yeah. and Woodland Hills. More Woodland Hills, but you know. Yeah. Okay, guys, we're gonna take a quick break, and we will be right back with Heather McDonald sharing worse firsts skills. Skills are good to have. It's good to have skills. Know how to do things, okay? I have a couple skills. Not that many. One of them's talking. I talk way too much. Definitely a skill that I don't need more of. But I would always love to learn new things. For instance, I love photography. I always wanted to learn how to do, uh, you know, real photography, how to set up the lights, how to take pictures, how to do all these things. And I'm like, where do I start? Where do I learn a skill? Where can you go? How do you just learn a skill? Do you just Google how to learn a skill? Watch YouTube videos? I feel like that's not really it. So there's a website called Skillshare where they literally have thousands of amazing classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. You can take classes in everything from photography to creative light, writing to design, productivity, and more. So whether you're like returning to a longtime passion project, maybe you're writing a book, you want to learn how to finish that or get it published or whatever, challenging yourself to get outside of your comfort zone or simply exploring something new, Skillshare has classes for you. And so the coolest thing about that is for you guys – you can get two months of unlimited access to thousands of classes for free. That's two months of your life to learn anything you want on Skillshare, the thousands and thousands of skills that you wanted to try for free. So to sign up, you go to Skillshare.com, that's S-K-I-L-L-S-H-A-R-E.com slash worst, W-O-R-S-T, and you get to start your two months for free. It's so awesome. That's literally it. Just Skillshare.com slash worst. And you get to look through all the amazing different classes they have. And you can check them out. And you get to try them for two months for free. I think that's enough time to learn a skill. So even if you just want to go on there and learn a skill and get the hell out of there, that's all you have to do. I mean, I'm sure once you're on there, you'll see a bunch more stuff that you're interested in. But what a cool way if you have some idle time or you've been looking to take up a new hobby, you're spending too much time worrying or watching TV, why not go to Skillshare.com slash worst, get to try a skill or something you've always wanted to learn two months for free for you from Skillshare. Enjoy, guys. Don't you guys just love when your drinks get really warm, you know, like warm soda or warm beer or warm wine? Isn't that the best? Uh, said no one ever. Uh, thank God there's this company called Brewmate because here's the thing. Honestly, my my I spent so much money on plastic bottles and bringing my stuff everywhere. And it's kind of a waste to think about it because I have a Brita filter at home. I have filtered water out of my sink. So why am I buying, you know, plastic bottles to carry my water in when I can just get uh, a piece of Tupperware that keeps my water cold. I put ice cubes in it. It's a nice, t I can get a tall glass. I can get a small glass. I can get whatever I want. It keeps whatever you want, cold soda, water, Gatorade, you know. And then that way you're also saving the environment because you're using something that is reusable. You can put it in your washer, your dishwasher and wash it and reuse it again. So 
I actually got really excited about this company called Brewmate, and I'm sure you've seen their ads on Facebook. That's how I first saw them. They have these really awesome uh, tumblers, which are, you know, you can get a a pint size, you can get a full glass size. They come in all different sizes and you can put anything in them, obviously, any kind of liquid that you want. They have a great top on them that you can, you know, use to spill proof. You can pull the top back to get the drink and put it back in place to keep the drink from spilling. It fits in your cup holder. And so I saw them because they come in these really cool different styles. There's like marble style. There's sparkly style. They make flasks that have sparkly tops. I mean, come on. It's like there's something for everybody. So um, I actually reached out to them, and they are offering you guys 15% off of your first order. So if you're tired of bringing water bottles everywhere, but you don't want to buy some, like, lame thing that's going to leak or whatever, go to their website, okay? That's brewmate.com, B-R-U. M-A-T-E dot com and enter the promo code WORST, W-O-R-S-T, for 15% off of your order. And it's totally worth it. I mean, think about how much money you're spending on on water bottles, you know, a year. You're spending, you know, $4.99 on a case of water bottles every time you go to the store. You know, you buy something like this, you get a water filter for a Brita or whatever, have filtered water out of your fridge, who knows, and you put it in this thing and you reuse it time and time again. That way you're contributing, you know, to, to not making a... a carbon footprint on the the earth and making things worse than they already are and god knows they're they're headed down a a horrible path with climate change so you know be the person that can help contribute to a positive future try out brewmate you can put beer wine whatever you want in it i'm gonna put water in mine but you know that's me i'm crazy enough without all the fun stuff so head over to brewmate.com that's b-r-u-m-a-t-e.com and enter the promo code worst w-o-r-s-t for 15 percent off of your brewmate order enjoy okay first of all who loves getting mail Raise your hand. I do. I love getting mail. Nina loves getting mail. Raise your paw, Nina. Um, so what's more fun than getting cool stuff in the mail? Really nothing. I mean, it's so exciting. Whenever I see a package with my name on it, even though I know I ordered it, it doesn't matter. It's just exciting to me. And one of my favorite things is the FabFitFun box. I don't know if you guys have ever subscribed to them or if you're currently subscribed. Let me tell you a little bit about it. It's basically a seasonal box. So, you know, summer, spring, fall, winter. You get this box four times a year. And the box is full of amazing stuff. And I'm not talking about like little tchotchke things. I'm talking about like full-size samples of things and, you know, full-size products and sweaters and scarves and jewelry and some sunglasses and it's like insane basically the box is only $49.99 but everything in it is worth over $200 so it's like an amazing it's an amazing deal I mean it's one of my favorite favorite things to get and I get so excited about it when I know it's coming so if you head over to www.fabfitfun.com and enter the promo code first that's f-i-r-s-t-s you will get ten dollars off your first fab fit fun box i mean these boxes make great gifts so if you're you know want to get something for someone for their birthday or you want to get something for someone you know whatever a girlfriend you know you want to get her something she's really gonna enjoy and it's like kind of the gift that never stops giving because it comes four times a year this is the perfect thing for you so if you're interested in that you're interested in full-size beauty products you're into fitness beauty fashion whatever it's the perfect box for you comes with all these amazing things i get really excited about it and i love getting mail and if you love getting mail this might be your thing so four times a year you're gonna get amazing stuff an amazing box from fabfitfun.com enter the promo code first f-i-r-s-t-s for ten dollars off your first box enjoy okay we're back (laughs) yes Super long break, huh? Did you yes. get, did you uh-huh. get a breather? Yeah. Yes, I loved I'm it. so glad to have you here. I love female comedians. I'm Thank like, you. that's my favorite. And a lot of them don't like me, but I like female now, comedians. Now, why do you say they don't like you? Have you gotten a little yeah. hate? Yeah. I have. It's, it's weird. Just like jealousy. when I used to hang out at the comedy store and like just do open mics and oh, stuff, yeah. and then the more successful comedians, you know, I'm not going to name names, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But people like on your level, mm-hmm. uh, they weren't very nice to me. They were always like very judgy and very like, uh, and I never did bad. I always did well and like whatever. And they were just kind of snobby, you know? Like it sucks. It's actually really shitty. Well, it, it, the thing is, is that we want to act like we're all, you know, women and empowering and help women, but we're our own worst enemies. Women are very competitive. Because like as much men. as we want to say, yeah. you know, it's so hard being a female comic. We yeah. want to be the only female comic in the room. So we're not helping each other the way the guys do. Mm-mm. You know, I think we are more now. And I think there's, 
each person is their own individual and you know there's people that you know in in some ways Joan Rivers mm. was really helpful but then in a lot of, in another way one a great book that was written about her after she died there was so many flattering positive things about her but one was like jealousy really yes she was so nice to me i loved her well yeah but you, probably but, because i wasn't like performing with her or right whatever. you, yeah, you yeah. weren't taking or, i mean mm. if you ever watched the documentary as much uh-huh. as she loved kathy griffin it's right before her before joan rivers come back on e and everything and mm. she was like i used to have all these dates and now it's all kathy griffin because at that time there really wasn't a lot of female comics doing mm. well now there's there's a lot there's the a whole lot. the whole thing is opened up for all different kinds of comics, mm-hmm. you know, gender, everything, mm-hmm. race, whatever. And that's great. And mm-hmm. I think people going to see comedy are much more sophisticated. And they are not just saying, I only like, you know, yeah. black lesbians. Yeah, yeah. Like, you I know, only <laughs> want to see black lesbian comics. Get the fuck, anything else, get the fuck out you know, of here. You know, just funny yeah. is funny and you can, you know. Right. you funny can is like a, funny. But the, the, the hard part as a female comic, which is what I figured out, where I say we're our own worst enemy and I've brought my listeners to recognize it and they've stopped, uh-huh. which is I'd have a show uh-huh. and I'd be like, I'm coming to town and then I'd see people writing excited, I'm coming. Yeah. And people are like, I'm coming, I'm dragging my husband. Uh... I'm dragging my husband. And I'm like, if your husband came home with Chris Rock concert tickets or whatever, you would go get a blowout and be thrilled to go. So excited. You would not go, oh, my husband dragged me to Chris Rock. No. But I go, but you're setting the precedent. Like, why can't why can't your husband find a female funny? Can I tell you why? Why are we accommodating? Why can we laugh at guys, but you suddenly think guys that Guys will not la- admit that girls are funny. I get so much hate. And even Dane Cook tweeted one time, girls aren't funny. And I like Dane Cook. I'm friends with him. He did? He when? He literally How tweeted that ago? during Vine, when I was on Vine. He tweeted, girls aren't funny. And I remember someone- That's a, amazing. A bunch of people when I was on Vine. I was, because, I mean, I'm not surprised, yeah. but- Yeah, yeah, he tweeted I remember that. the article came out maybe like eight, ten years ago that was really, and it was women aren't funny, and it was yes. some old fart that wrote something, and um, Bonnie McFarlane did like a great- um, kind of small documentary about it called women aren't funny and like interviewed all these women and and you know and i think that she really helped get it of course we're in a better place now but that's part of it it's just growing up like that i mean my sons don't say that they well, know duh, they their know mom's fucking hilarious right you're they like know take we're this funny. selfie like right under the boobs like to their to your kids i love it you're like my son took this photo you're like half naked i love it though it's so chill like it's the I best know, like, your I... son's all like looking away you're like no i need thick fucking look at it i need a good angle like it's it's hilarious when you post your bikini picture i mean it's like... true because i'm like well, who else is gonna take it i'm like sorry give your thumbs a break and come over here because he's always on I've the video game i've supported your whole life the yes. one thing you can do is click a goddamn picture yeah but I, but I do think after i say that i'm like you know what will his made for tv movie be like because <laughs> like that's you know it's not no wire it's hangers but it's a little weird the it's a little weird yeah, yeah no it's it's true is like i actually just did the tiger belly podcast yes to, uh, bobby, bobby lee. lee love him and i got so much hate oh just like the like the guys that follow him it was yeah. almost all guys were like tell her to get out of here like shut up or suck a dick like they're just so exactly I mean, this is probably this podcast is probably coming out weeks later anyway I keep, well, no, and no, i keep but talking but about I it but you know what i'm because, saying like um and guys said that a lot to me on vine it was always well, guys. Here, here's the thing so burt kreischer yeah. you know blowing up great comic yeah and i love him i think he's so funny mm-hmm. we didn't really know each other well right. but his daughters go to the same Catholic school that I went to. So oh. I was like, oh, my God, this is so cool. And they live in the Valley. And we reached out. We started talking. I'm like, I love for you. let's do each other's podcast. Mm-hmm. My husband became obsessed with his comedy. My husband comes to the podcast, mm-hmm. like, just to, like, be, try to be his, like, bro. Mm-hmm. And I do the podcast. I think I do great. I mm-hmm. think, like, it's funny. And and they put the whole thing on YouTube and it was a hot day mm-hmm. and I was just wearing like black but like flowy shorts but mm-hmm. the legs, I have pretty great legs and you they were sitting legs. there. And so a couple first comments were about, you know, how they'd like to come on my legs which I was like, great, thank so you, flattered. finally. Yes, thank like you, finally please. I haven't lost it, you know? But there was not one that was like, she was funny or cool. It was either I wanna fuck her or hey Bert, you've had too many clams on the show lately. Like he'd, cause he'd had like Whitney Cummings on like Well at least they didn't say they wanted to stone me. me to death. And I yeah. was just like, oh, what a bummer, because 
I introduced my audience, which is a great audience, yes. but I they a lot they're not a comedy going audience. Uh-huh. They're they're women uh-huh. and females that are more into like reality show and fashion and everything. But what's great is I have people come on and then they're like, Oh my god, now we're gonna go see these comics. So I was like, you know, they loved Bert. They were, of course they were like, my husband would love him. Yeah, let's, yeah. I'll buy tickets for both of us. Like, let's support Bert Kreischer. And my husband and, will willingly go. Oh, yeah. we're going to start listening to the podcast. My husband I'm will like, get a blowout before we go. Like, yeah. I didn't, I don't know if I yeah. did or did it. I don't know. There might have been five guys. Because I know that I when I put my stand-up out there, I do get men that see it on their Instagram or whatever and are like, oh, my wife would like her. Okay, I'll buy tickets. Like, that's Aww. very nice. And then they like it too. The guys like it because I'm not male bashing, but that's the other thing we have is mm-hmm. as female comics in this era, guys feel it's been so hard for them lately. So I they know. so they, they feel like, oh my God, am I gonna like, go? You fucking bitches me tooing me for everything. Yeah, like I can't do anything. Me yeah. too, Trump yeah. bash. Right, and so right. it's like I also you know have to say, look, you guys, you come to my show, the husbands are laughing the most. No, it's awesome. And they are like they come up and it's still a little rude. They were like, I didn't think I'd like you, but you were hilarious, you know? And I'm like, I will take it. Yes. But it's also weird that I'm more excited to see the man laughing his ass off than the girl. I actually, and I know that's fucked up, I feel it is the same fucked up, way. But it's true. When I make a guy laugh, it makes me so happy. Yeah. Because I'm like, ha, 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 I win. You know right. what I mean? I got your nuts. And that's, like, that's when I realized, because I was always like, oh, I don't want to play the female card, and I'm right. grateful, and I wouldn't have gotten this if, you know, because like, I recognize the times that like being a woman has gotten me a job. Now, being a woman, um, you know, and not being a white male is giving a lot of people jobs. And honestly, there are white males that are very qualified and suffering a little bit yeah, because they of are. it. There's too many white and, guys. <laughs> so many white guys. There is. And yeah. I mean, you know, like not to say that there's anything wrong with the way things are happening today. But I mean, I know there are literally are jobs yeah. that they go, no, we cannot look at Sorry, any we writing can't have samples. another white guy. No yeah. writing samples from white males. Yeah, we want an African-American, yeah. Chinese, Bangladeshian. Like, we want it as foreign and, as possible. Right. And yeah. I think that's great. Like, mm-hmm. you've got to have diversity in the writer's yeah. room. But in some ways, I think now it's becoming a little well. Can I tell you something? Because I mean, when it comes to comedy, I was just gonna say, when it comes to comedy and writing, um, that's such a specific thing. Yeah, like that's you know, and you've got to be able to have someone's cadence, and you've got to be able to write for the person that's most like you. Like the reverse of that is, I remember many years ago when, um, oh my God. Like my name is the 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 hilarious black guy in Thirty Rock. That got in the horrible bus accident. Oh, uh, 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 Jordan, uh, uh, Hort- no, Jordan, no, 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 no. Uh, my uh, Murphy, not Morgan. Morgan, Cause, Morgan. Yes, isn't it Morgan? Yeah, Tracy Morgan. Tracy Morgan. God, I was like, uh, can, can so, the producer? I just like TMS, so I'm so like, Trace, I, my memory. Tracy dead, yeah. Morgan was on SNL like yes, 15, bad. you know, 18 mm-hmm, years mm-hmm. ago. Um, you know, he wasn't featured that much if you look back. Mm-hmm. And it's because they didn't I have any... Him on us and all. They didn't have yeah. any African-American male writers. Right, right. And so I knew a couple of... A pl- couple black hilarious comics that would go in and, you know, were trying to get the job or they'd get two weeks and then someone else would try two weeks. Mm-hmm. And that's why he wasn't featured because people write what they know. So right. if, you, the, if the show is about... in you know, an Asian family, it makes sense to have a lot of Asian writers. If the show is blackish, it Mm -hmm. it makes sense to have, you know, a variety of people. But, you know, but if it was my show, you know, I'd want, I'd still want to, I still would want the funniest people. But I I wouldn't care what color you were. But what is what I mean, but if, but in some cases, what if they were like, okay, Heather, you can have this show, but you cannot have one white straight female. Sorry. Okay, can Their I... quote is full. And I'm I, like, well, then this is going to be hard for me, you know? I literally have to tell you this because yes, it's hilarious. Please. I've been going on auditions lately, and I was up for this uh, this show, and I'm not going to say what it was because I don't even know if I'm still going to get it or not, mm-hmm. but they, like, loved me, okay? Mm-hmm. But they were like, is she ethnic at all? Mm-hmm. They said it's my agent. And my agent's like, I mean, she's Italian. Like, I'm not from Italy. My grandparents are. You know what I mean? But they were hoping I was, like, Puerto Rican. Or, or Middle Eastern. Middle Eastern mm-hmm. Or something, right? And so they said no, and they were like, mm, bummer, because the network really wants someone who's either black or mm-hmm. Chinese, no white, no right. white girl. No. Like they, and that, that's been literally that's the, the case. That's for the mandate. Lately, everything I've gone out for, 
mm-hmm. everything. They're like, we just don't want another white girl. We don't. And I'm not trying to be like, oh, boo hoo, no, exactly. white girls. Like, no, I'm not I, trying to say I'm, that. No, like, we've and we've had so many thing, opportunities. I, yeah. I'm not being boo hoo either. Yeah, but it's yeah. just, but it's I think times it, are changing, so, so and for I mean, the better, I guess. But yeah. I mean, that's also why I kind of was like, well, thank God I have my stand up and my yep. podcast mm-hmm. because I certainly can't depend on, you know, yeah, getting booked on anything because people yeah. want ethnic, ethnicity. Yes. And just look at all the commercials. Literally every commercial is almost all ethnicities now, which and, is great. It's about and time. And it's also but, great know. to see how many um, different types of families we see. Yes. A lot of gay families. Gay families. But I don't yeah, feel yeah. like we've come far enough uh-huh. until there's a Christmas commercial this year where it's two gay grandpas. Oh my God, that'd be amazing. It's got to happen. And they get each other big dildos and they're like, oh my Merry Christmas, <laughs> Howard, and just slap each other in the face with it. Like, this Christmas is, this has is, no age. This is the Folgers commercial I right, want to see. Right. And then when this happens, I'll be like, Heather, you predicted it. And now we've come full circle. Now can we? Now we've definitely like done Speaking it. Speaking of come full circle. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. a family coming to visit for right. Christmas, uh-huh. you know. And it's uh, clearly two old gay men that are still well dressed, <laughs> still tucked in with a belt, and their house looks like the, from the Bird House. The, ha- the house still looks great. Yeah, Bird cage. And um, yeah. and they're holding hands, you know. And Aww. then, clearly, the first wife that gave birth to these kids that are now bringing their grandchildren over, she's a little hippy dippy and totally fine with it. Just hang on. <laughs> and loves it. Yeah, yeah, loving it. Yeah. And you know, the best part of waking up. Soldiers in your cup. You and know, that's and then it. I would, and it's just two gay guys cheering and, it's, and they make it very, very clear. Because that's the thing. When they throw they have to make it very clear. Like like when they're showing different, they show yeah. like the two guys like overly cuddling on the couch. So it's like, yeah, hey, these yeah. aren't just these friends aren't watching just grandpas. footballs. These are, or, you know, like when they show like younger men, they're like, no, make it clear. Like they are fucking tonight. Like lick a little yeah. bit on the, each other's lips. Just a little bit. They're just drink. They're spitting the coffee in each other's mouths. <laughs> yeah, make it very, yeah, you know, yeah. advertising is. That's, yes. hey, I think we're getting there. Okay, we're I give like it well on our way. If not this Christmas next, but I, I think sure. it might happen this Christmas. What if someone listens to this podcast and makes it? They better credit I, you. Pl- please, Guys, come on. There's Heather. so many things I put out there, and I just I go know. steal it. Did you go? Did you? You said you auditioned for SNL, didn't you? My SNL story is another horrible story. Oh, you Sad could have been story. on there. Well, what happened was I got a show. I got a pilot um, called Lyricist Lounge, mm-hmm. and it was on for two seasons. What's that about? It was a kind of ahead of its time. It was actually rappers. <laughs> it was Shazam. It was like <laughs> no, but it was on, actually the, there were these rappers in New York uh-huh. that would like rap an entire like improv and rap an entire sketch, not necessarily song, but they'd be like put a beat yeah, to yeah, it yeah. and do a whole scene. Yeah. So this M- MTV producer Claude Brooks like loved it, but he also had like a comedy background. So they were like, let's do some lyrical sketches, but then some traditional sketches, and we need. You know, two um, two girls, a white and a black girl. So uh-huh. luckily, you know, I was white. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so, but I tried to audition and they didn't want me. So they hire a white girl, and she's not very good. Ugh. And all my black friends that had known me from Keenan Ivory Wayne's show that I'd work on that for, mm-hmm. they were like, "Well, we know a funnier white girl than this this person." So. This is where I'm like, my, the being the, the white person in the black room helped me yeah, because yeah. like all my black friends, like, like I always say, oh, the like, black This white bitch is funny as shit. I <laughs> the, mean, she got legs like toothpicks, but you know, she funny. She kills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm dead. That's a horrible impression. Yeah. I, okay. I, I, but you know, that's why I'm like, oh I my God, the, the yeah. black man has been very good to me. Right. You know, I've been hired many a time. Yeah. So, so I go in and I get that job and yeah. then they, then the, the black girl on the show was offended by the sketches. So she leaves, oh, never wow. to be seen or heard or on TV again. Wow. And they get Tracy Ellis Ross. Oh, dope. I love her. Yeah. So She's like, great. So she, you know, like I remember I'd like seen about her just because, you know, like she was so stunning and like I yeah. remember reading like a magazine article about her, but this was basically like her first you know, real TV show, as was mine. And for my young, young audience members, that's uh, Diana Ross's daughter. Yes, and the mom in Blackish. Diana Ross, yeah, so, and the mom and, in Blackish. And yes. so she, um, so we like hit it off, and we're having fun, and so we do the pilot, mm-hmm. and then I take all the sketches from the pilot, and we submit it for SNL, because we didn't oh. think, poof, to say this pilot's gonna yeah. go. And then SNL are like, oh yes, come on, um, you're gonna get the audition, it's Tuesday. Okay, so I'm dating my husband. And this is in New York City? Yes, I was supposed to go Tuesday. So I'm dating my husband Uh and my Aunt Claire, who lives in the Hamptons, 
is like, yes, you and Peter are coming. I'm so excited. You know, Dennis is going to, you know, go take you to the club. You know, it's oh, going to be like a, my I've never been to Hamptons. Right, I right. bought some white jeans. <laughs> I'm pretty excited. My relationship. That's like what you need. That's your passport into the yes. Hamptons. Like, so I'm your like fucking getting Hamptons jeans? outfits. Yeah. My boyfriend, who's, you know, at the time, is excited to go. And I'm mm-hmm. like, this is so great. I'll have the audition. The minute the audition's got done, we go. Yeah. Who cares? We Slap go have on a the fun white pants. And yeah. Just like, yeah, the stress of that, it's over. Yeah. And go just binge I go rose. meet with my old, like, Growlings director. She helps me come up with, you know, my audition and everything. And the Monday before the Tuesday morning, I get a call. I literally am looking at my suitcase with the white jeans. It's like half packed because it's like two o'clock or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And my agent's like, I have good news and bad. You know, the bad is you cannot audition for SNL because the good news is the pilot got picked up, and they and the and MTV wouldn't become second position, and if SNL would SNL. only see you if you're first. You would have gotten SNL. Just and so you know. I probably, if I would have gotten SNL, I probably would have never married my husband. And I'd probably be very successful today and not be sitting across from you. No, you wouldn't be here at all. You wouldn't be here. I'd be like, Heather McDonald. I'd be like, who is that, bitch? Although I did have Melissa Villasenor on here. She's great. I love her. I'm just kidding. Yeah, but, but you know what I mean? But, but I do. But like also I feel knew you. going on that, yeah. I was like, if I get this, yeah. I'm, breaking, I'm breaking up with Peter. Like, I'm not going to have a long distance thing. Peter, I'm not leaving live. your ass in the dust. But I'm yeah, like, yeah. come on. Like, I got to focus. Like, this is, yes. you know. So then I was always like, oh, I think. Do you ever look back and go, fuck, I wish I did that? I mean, not to make you feel bad. The only thing I, it's really hard the way everything was because then I was like, you know, so in love and newly married, as you know, being a newlywed. Yes. And I was a stepmom to a, a very young girl, mm-hmm. a little baby, and that we had every other weekend, Aww. my stepdaughter. And so then once the show ended after two seasons, my agent was like, well, do you want to submit again? And now I probably really had a You could a have great done that. Tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was like, well, no, because I'm not moving to New York and leaving yeah. my husband and my stepdaughter that we have half the time. And that I kind of regret. Yeah. Because I think that we could have made it work. You could have made it work. And I think. And you would have loved it, Heather. And it could have been like life changing. And yeah. I, I did I did the Catholic wifely thing. I yeah. chose, you know. Why not still try? Look at Leslie <laughs> Jones. She's like 45. Um, now I don't want to do that. You don't want to do no, that. You're already now, so successful. I mean, You've I, written books. Honestly, you have a house in Woodland like, Hills. like it would be like a pay break. Right, I, right. I honestly, I love coming up with stuff first and putting yeah. it out there. Even if it only gets yeah. 50,000 views. That's I'm a like, lot. More than most I'm people. I'm like, oh, well, and sometimes I'll post it and I'll tag SNL. So I'm like, hey, if you're thinking of doing this. Just, or hiring you as a writer. Just, just so you know, I did. No, I'd rather get the credit. Do they make everyone audition for even for writers? The writer have to audition? Or do they just do no, submit the, well, writing the writers samples. have to submit stuff. Just samples. But then some people do get hired as like a writer um, performer. Okay, yeah. And um, and I do think it's so great. But I do think what's kind of hard about SNL now is that there's so many funny people and there's so many pop cultural cultural things. Yeah. And you know something happens on Monday night and you, me, whatever, we yeah. can do our version of it and put it out there. Uh-huh. And they might be working on something like that. And then by Saturday night, now I don't know if this is true, but I'm assuming, I'm assuming things that some things get cut close to showtime Always, because, yeah. oh my God, this already has a million views, which is basically the same mm-hmm. thing. And I think it's hard. That, that's, that part I think is hard because in the old days they would come up with something and they're the first ones to do it that week. Yes. Now there's not only the late night shows that are doing something funny. But Everybody on the internet. Yeah, all the podcasts, that like happens everything. To me, all, that happened to me a lot on Vine. That's why I got so much hate on Vine. People would be like, oh, she stole that joke. I'm like, bitch, I didn't know fucking Billy in Wisconsin with 15, 1,500 followers did the same joke as me. I don't follow all these people. Right. You know what I mean? So it's kind of frustrating. Like there's only yeah. so many ideas. Like, bitch, everything's been done. You know what I right. mean? Someone just, yeah. Someone just posted. Um, the somebody that does just posted Barbies in the Real Housewives yeah. reunion outfits, yeah. not mine. Someone yeah. else did, but and someone wow. wrote like, "Oh, someone's you know copying you, or whatever." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what? It bothers me a little, but at the same time, I'm like, whatever. I knew when I started this that someone's going to bite you. The minute I yeah. started it, I go, "This is going to give other people yeah. ideas," and I'll do it for as long as it makes sense. No one's doing the videos. Yeah. Also, it's not the only thing I do. Yeah. Thank God I do 
20 billion other things yes. that are funny. And always can come up with something new. And that's what I say all the time, too. You got to like, let it go. You'll make yourself crazy. Crazy. And like, yeah. I have, I've had people like attack me, like be like, oh, I did this first and, and like freak out. I'm like, do you not have any other good ideas that you're so <laughs> mad about your one good idea? You must have like no good ideas. Because no. like, if you're going to hang on to that, like, it's kind of crazy. Like, I've been ripped off a thousand fucking times yeah. and I've never said a thing. I don't go get all mad and fucking say shit. Like, whatever. Like, who cares? I did it dope. You know what I mean? Like, who cares? Well, I just also think it's just, there's no way you're going to prove it. Right, or right. It's, what are you going to take someone to court? Like, I mean, oh unless it's God. truly like a movie that yeah. you wrote. Yeah. That you have evidence that you shared with all the executives of Paramount yeah. that they all received a copy. Right, right. And then three years later, your exact movie that being matches made, yeah. your script yeah. is now there and you didn't get a cent. Then I'd say go see a lawyer. But, but short of that, good fucking luck. I had this girl, a uh, comedian who I'm not going to say her name. Uh, someone randomly sent me a video of hers on Instagram where she was pretending to be an old Hollywood starlet and I used to do a character like that years ago and I yeah. thought her video was cute and I liked it or I was on Twitter and I liked it and then a couple weeks later I I posted a video of me having an old star uh, a old Hollywood starlet who lived in my closet and uh, she was a ghost and she like made fun of me, right? And and so it was like a kind of similar, but not like hers yeah. didn't live in her closet. Hers wasn't, I don't even know if hers was a ghost, whatever. Anyway, and I've done many characters like that yes. in the years. And so this girl, after I post it, like goes on this rampage attacking me going, you saw my video on Twitter and now you did this video and you fucking copied me. Meanwhile, I didn't say one thing similar to what she said. Like, oh, because I dressed up as like an old Hollywood starlet. Like that's your character. Like no one else can be an old Hollywood. You know what I mean? It well, was and, just like and so say, annoying. And then same with impressions. Yeah. Like no one owns an impression. Yeah, you don't own fucking shit like yeah. you don't unless you publish it and the best stuff is whatever how you know how you do it and what they say exactly and mine was a totally different yeah. sketch point of view out, yeah. totally different point of view like totally a hundred percent different and a different character mine yeah. was like a flapper hers was like some god who knows what anyway she like had these people at i think buzzfeed or somebody write a fucking article <gasps> about me and How long ago was this? This was like a year ago. And so these people at Buzz people sucks. there's a team of people at BuzzFeed that were like loving Vine but like hated me who would write all these <laughs> shit articles about me and they were all fucking dumbass dudes. Anyway, so they write about me and this girl and and they get like all hit, haughty about it. Like, do you think Britney copied this girl? Blah blah blah. And I went to the BuzzFeed page of the article and all the comments were like, Who gives a fuck? Like, who cares? Like, who Good. cares? Everyone was like, Who gives a fuck? Like, no one fucking cares. Like Keep creating. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, if you're that confident in your artistic ability as a comedian, you're not going to get mad if someone does something slightly similar to what you did because you know what? You'll have confidence that you did it better or that you're just going to do something else. So who cares? Like, I don't think, fucking yeah, worry about it. I think the it. biggest thing is that it's just like, just be like, well, you know, it's thank it's God stupid. it's not the only thing I do. Right. I do and, a million characters and, and I've been like, doing move characters on. for years. Yeah. yeah. And I've done that same character. I had the flapper dress. I didn't go out and buy it. I had that shit in my closet right. for years. And apparently she never watched any of my sisters. She thinks like, Oh, you went out and bought that costume for this thing. It's anyway, it's just so stupid. And I and I honestly I honestly think uh for this day and age, people are just, you know, everyone wants to get paid. Everyone wants to, you know, like, oh, that's my idea. I want to get paid, whatever. Like, yeah. you know, but you know what, guys? Like, just create and create stuff that makes people laugh and makes you happy. And, like, that's, like, the biggest reward of all, yeah. you know? I mean, if someone blatantly steals exactly word for word, fucking matches the costumes, everything like that, that's one thing. But if people but have even similar if ideas, they do, like, yeah. you know, it's just like, well, I hope my fans know I did it first. And right, my, right. I mean, my dad always used to say plagiarism is the highest form of flattery. flattery. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like, I just don't think it's worth your energy. And it's like, mm -mm. but it will make you upset. But, yeah. but the more that you work on like, oh, well, I've got other things. Yeah. Then the more it's like because yeah. especially nowadays it's going to happen. Oh, so, so much. much! I mean, you've seen that like on SNL. Yeah, they've taken comedians' jokes and turned them into sketches. But what's hap what happens yeah. there yeah. is, and I think Jay Moore even wrote about it in like yeah. his first book. Mm -hmm. Is a writer comes with something, mm -hmm. and the head writer and the other writers aren't aware that it's not their Material. actual work, yeah. and they're like yeah. desperate and scared they're going to lose their job. Yeah, and I think that's happened. I think that happens with like um, sitcom stuff. Like, there's been some sitcoms where things from my first special, my uh -huh. boys are like, "Mom, mom, watch this." They say exactly what you yes, said. Do yeah. you think? And I go. 
you know, I don't know if they did or they didn't, but I could see a writer being working for a show like yeah, this yeah. and they're desperate. They should watch 10 female stand up specials that mm-hmm, are moms mm-hmm, if they exist. Mm-hmm, you know, like mm-hmm. they should watch the funniest, like, mom YouTubers. And you to see come your stuff up with in something. It, yeah. And they probably do. They'd be dumb not to. I mean, mm-hmm. they shouldn't rip it off. But at the same time, it's probably going to happen. You have to know that when you put it out there. I mean, years ago when I, I was auditioning for Mad TV and some of my friends from the Groundlings, which is a sketch troupe, were like, I don't know if I want to do that. You bring in all your original characters and then they and put then them they on tape them. And, then they may, and then they may steal them and not mm-hmm. give you the job. I'm like, but you're not, no one's ever going to see them right, right. unless you get on this show. Right. So you can sit in this 99 person theater till you're 50 right. or you can like risk it. Right. So it's like, there's that little bit like, are you really not going to, okay, then if you don't share this, yeah. if you share this, yes, someone will steal it, right. you know, and they right. may get more views than you and they may get the award of it, you know, right. but like, what are you going to do? Like, mm-hmm. like perfect example of an SNL thing is I was at on Chelsea lately when we were first introduced to Sarah Palin mm-hmm. and the world's going crazy. And I immediately did her that night, you know, did her like a couple times that week. Mm-hmm. I think I remember that you were really good at it. But, I remember that. Yeah. you know, mm-hmm. Tina Fey is on Saturday Night Live and that goes viral mm-hmm. and it's a bigger audience than E. She's a bigger name mm-hmm. and she was hilarious and the, her sketches were hilarious. Ours were too. They were a little different, but mm-hmm. they were too. Mm-hmm. And oh well. That's it. You know, mm-hmm. oh well. Yeah. No one remembers that I did Sarah Palin, but you know, who cares? And then there were I'm sure Sarah Palin remembers. And there were people online back then yeah. that had all that were also doing Sarah Palin mm-hmm. right away that day, like YouTube stars and mm-hmm. stuff. And I'm like, that's just life. Yeah, everybody just hops on the fucking train. Like yeah. that's what they do when they see something's taking off. You know, like, it's just what people do. Yeah. Look at the fucking uh, water bottle challenge. Everyone kicking fucking caps off of water bottles and hitting them off with their penises and stuff. Who started that? I don't know. I think Jason Statham. He, like, okay. did, like, a backflip and kicked a fucking lid off a water bottle or off of a, I'm sorry, a, a, a liter of, of Tito's vodka. Yeah. And everyone was like, whoa, he's such a badass. Let me try that. And then people just start doing it with crazy shit and, like, yeah. doing their own versions, having dogs do it, hitting it with their dicks. Like, you know, people are people are people. Like, let me just take this to but the next But that money level. didn't go to ALS or anything, did it? No. <laughs> no, it did nothing. It went to, like, probably fucking Viagra. Who knows? He's like, uh, Viagra challenge. Everybody, uh, you know, guys uh, guys need hard dicks. So that's what it is. Um, You know what it is. It's what it is. Comedy's hard. It's hard. Is that what we're going to end on? Comedy's, I don't know. Comedy's hard. I don't know. Are we ending? Can I plug my shit? Yeah, plug all your shit, guys. Make sure you follow Heather McDonald if you don't already follow her. She's amazing, and I... And I love her, and I think she's so funny and so talented, and I'm always rooting for female comedians. And go see her do stand-up. Where yes, are you, where I'm are you actually be- taping my second special um, this August, August 17th, 16th and 17th. The 17th it? is the tape day okay. at Irvine Improv. Oh, okay. But I'll be there all weekend, 16th, 17th, and 18th of August, but the 17th is the tape day, um, which I'm excited and like nervous about. But... Um, and then everything's at heathermcdonald.net and my podcast is Juicy Scoop. It's twice a week and it's been a long time so you can scroll back and listen to whatever you want. Juicy Scoop is twice a week, you guys. You're, yes, that's thir- spoiled. Tuesdays Mine's only and once Thursday. A week. That's great. Yeah. People like that. That's another thing that, <laughs> that you start and then you can't stop. I know. So, yeah. So, so that's a lot keep, of work. It is. It, God, fucking twice a week. I can barely is. keep with up with all the week. promo and all the ads oh and all the booking. God. But I do appreciate it. It's doing well. And, and people it's love it. paying to send my child to camp. So there, there you, you go. go. You have to get your kids in camp, guys. The old school fun. Get off your fucking computers and get to camp. Get, yeah. get bitten by deer ticks. That's where we want our kids to be. I love it. Okay, so follow Heather McDonald. Heather McDonald dot com net dot net sorry she's a little older than you guys no <laughs> dot com somebody I'm just kidding. somebody took it like so long ago I know, and then so they wanted to like ten thousand dollars for not, it like, now it doesn't matter org. you know what i mean it could be yeah worse. so you're dot net that's dot still net chill. it's good enough it's the internet makes sense um and so make sure to follow her at, you're just heather mcdonald yes. on instagram and twitter yeah and mm-hmm. twitter and juicy scoop podcast just how you think it would be spelled juicy and scoop just a big juicy yes. scoop i love the name of that yeah, and go name. back and listen to the Britney episode. Yay! Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. you. And guys, make sure to keep leaving those great reviews on iTunes. I read all of them, even the ones that make me cry. Um, it's good to know I still have feelings. And uh, yeah, make sure to uh, keep listening every week for Worst Firsts. Bye! Bye.